one minute on the clock and yet we still start who are these people well ladies and gentlemen welcome back to esl southeast championship season six online playoffs my name is the traveling person i'm here with brody gosta vernon to bring you a very exciting game oh no definitely and like right now just looking straight into the picks and bands which you're going to be getting into these teams I don't know. It's like their last chance at this. This is their last shot to get back into the whole event, to, you know, continue through towards the stages. There's a lot of pressure here, and I don't know. It's going to be a wild night. I can just see it now. Well, here we go. We have loaded the picks and bans for you, and we see the Zaya is already out of the way. We did see Insta it. gone. Oh, exactly. We did see it bring a lot of trouble to a lot of teams in the tournament, same as the Kalista, which... Seems pretty much a permanent ban. Well, like, I think Callista is so strong at the moment that you just, like, we don't even want to try get it as a first pick. We're not going to risk that. We are just going to have to force ban it. And, like you said, we've seen that ban, like, almost, I think, 95% of the times. We've seen it once. I mean... I'm expecting to see an Azir now. Yes! It yeah, is yeah. going to be getting instantly locked in. It was the thing that was always permabund as well. And every time it slips through the cracks, it has to get picked. And it does get picked. And by the way, we completely slipped. And we didn't say that today. It is a match on the loser bracket that is the best of three that determines which team still stays alive on the lower bracket to be able to get their way through that upper bracket again and which team is going to say for good goodbye to esl sex season six so hecker must come in Ooh. for gucci gang Let's see what Team Horizon Reapers are going to choose to reply with. I am thinking they're going to go aggressive as well. They do have the Azir, so maybe a Rengar would complement it well. A Kha'Zix as well. well. Like now that they Jarvin. first picked Azir, they can probably start looking towards building up a aggressive team fighting cop. But or, as I said, that they pick up Lee exactly, Sin. Or nothing of what I said, and they just pick Lee Sin. That's... I suppose he can work very well, especially you can abuse him in the early game and having the Zia kind of like, I wouldn't say solidates your team fight capabilities, but he does add a lot to it. So you don't have to go as team fight heavy on with the pick. So it'll be interesting to see what they're going to pick up right next to just complement the Zia and Lee Sin. Numbers slowly ticking away. We're going to be seeing the virus. Well, the virus does make sense against the Caitlyn because... He's able to harass her without getting harassed as much as any other lower range ADC. Um, I mean, also, he's one of the, I wouldn't say, like you said, he's one of the few champions who can go up against Caitlyn. But I think just also he brings, don't forget, he brings to the team fight as well. Like, as much as Caitlyn brings to the team fight, her ultimate versus Varus ultimate, I'm going to go Varus ultimate every time. Oh, definitely. And we do know that if that Caitlyn lane does not break any tower up to minute 10, it is sort of a doomed lane. You kind of like hover yourself around on the map, not really knowing where to go and what to get. And then suddenly the other ADC outscales you early and you're still stuck on a side lane trying to farm up that gear, these items to be able to get back into the fights. Saying that, Cholgath has been banned and taken out of the way same as the jace uh, the question is which team's going to be banning now or trying to you know pick up the now because he seems to be kind of you know sliding his way into the match now but i should we should be seeing a ban or we should be seeing a pick especially that orn has gone you know jace is gone so they do have some focus on the top lane between the two teams Okay, then let's see. They only have two more bands left. And where are they going to choose to put them? It is going to be in the top lane for GG. And we don't see a lot of mid lane oriented bands. What is going on? Are they are they not scared that this Azir could get countered by anything at this point? Um, I think they just like playing on a lot of confidence in the Azir. Like, well, we do have the Leeson to back him up. So, like, if he is having, you know, hard lane pressure, is he, if he is getting countered, they kind of can just, like, let's send Leeson there and help him out. But you see a lot of the top lane focus, as I'm pretty sure we just saw, you know, Nar got banned. And was that, what was that hiding behind the blue tile? 
who's going to be hiding behind that blue tally is going to be the Shen. That is the last ban for THR. As expected, one of the, I suppose one of the top, you wouldn't want to give that over, especially that they're playing quite an aggressive comp, you know, the Caitlyn, Karma, Hecarim, and is LeBlanc going to be locked in? Yes, she's going to be locked in. So, oh boy. This is going to be a wild mid lane. This is going to be very interesting because LeBlanc does have her way around the Aziz. He is going to suffer early, but when it comes to an all-in, she does have the advantage there. Oh, oh. Insta lock jacks Ooh. right there. Well, I suppose seeing, they kind of like. Seeing this big saying, gets very interesting. Yeah. They're going to say, like, let's just take the jacks right away. Like, let's see what you have to really counter it. So. First, they can really play. They are playing. Both these teams are start like kind of sifting away from a full team fight comp and like well we can have jacks we can have some aggressive push split pushing we can have the least into our about aggression but they still have like you said the, they now have a brom they have an azir that's a lot of team fighting compared with the Varus. so they don't they do have these backup plans but going on to the side of gg that's quite a painful comp right there very squishy but painful what could potentially be in the top lane that could complement the comp of GG? They're going to choose to go with Marka. the Maokai, though. So... We, I kind of agree. We only have pick. one tank on each team right now. We have a yeah. lot of fighters. We have an assassin on the side of GG. A very heavy AP mid lane on the side of THR. Bruiser in the top lane also for THR. And... Ooh, let's start getting analyzing these team comps because they so they both seem so out of the ordinary that we usually see. Well, like it, it is out of the ordinary, but it still kind of fits the the current meta and the way things are slowly shifting with new runes and everything. Hecarim's very strong. GG managed to get that pickup, and then having the Caitlyn Karma that's an aggressive lane itself, having LeBlanc in the mid lane, Malka are going to be extremely tanky, and then he has his ultimate. So. I think GG will have, you know, that that early game pressure, the early game advantage, and, you know, try and get this. Even though, you know, THR have the Lee Sin, they have the Azir, and they have the Braum. I still think right now, Hecarim kind of outscales Lee Sin. So, if they, don't, if they don't really abuse that Hecarim early game, we could see it, slif, like, sifting towards THR. But I do think, like, GG right now, they got they got the comp they wanted. They they look like they have comfortable picks. You know, the Hecarim, Caitlyn, Karma. LeBlanc's interesting. LeBlanc's going to be the wild card going into this one. LeBlanc is basically going to be the make or break. If you go really far behind with LeBlanc, there's really literally no way of coming back into the game unless the HR make a huge, huge, huge mistake, which at this point of the game where it's basically uh, live or die in the competition, I don't think any of these teams want to be making any mistakes. So I think it's going to be more of who's going to be taking more of advantage of the game than who's going to be making most of the mistakes. Like if these teams want to stay alive, and it's not just about staying alive, these teams are right now in the lower bracket. So if they want to climb back up and there's going to be only one team that is going to be able to climb back up they need to do to make no mistakes in the lower bracket and find their way back into their upper bracket but i will agree with everything you said and i want to stand a little bit on that bot lane the karma does 100 percent come to the brom but the brom finds a way to survive in the lane and provides a lot of cc whether and if that leads in gang's bot lane and the virus oh, yeah. is pretty even with the Caitlyn, especially at the early stages of the game. But I think when this level 6 starts for the virus and the Brom, that's going to mean a lot of trouble for the Caitlyn Karma lane. Because it gets so much more difficult. You have on the on one side, you have two champions, Caitlyn and Karma, who their level 6 doesn't matter that much when they hit it. Like, Karma already has it. She already has an amplification on her spells. And then the Caitlyn, the ultimate, is there going to be a harassment at the start of a fight or to get a kill at the end of the fight? Whilst on the other Hold side, on. you have a brawl 2v2 lane with the virus and the brom. That's, uh, I don't know, like you said, level 6 is going to hit and like, brom is ultimate is going to be very strong. Pair that with, you know, the virus ultimate, there is so much engage and disengage once you're at level 6. Whereas, like you said, Karma already has it. Caitlyn's ultimate's kind of an execute. You're not going to be engaging with it. 
We've seen so many games where the Caitlyn's been like, oh, let me just, you know, alt the mid laner because I'm yeah. around and there's no other use for it because why not? So I think that's going to be like a crucial factor. Like they have to play the early game very aggressive, trying to get a pick before they hit level six. So once they hit level six, we're going to be seeing, you know, Hecram to be forced down to the bot lane to try and make some moves. But I expect it to be a lot sooner than that. I expect with this Hecram, the Blank, you well, know, now that you say Hecram. Thing, it ended up not being a hacker in the end. What? Um, I'm trying to remember that show in America where people were like doing pranks on people, and then you were like, "You have been." I don't. I just don't remember the name. Eh. Well, basically, we have been pranked. It's not a hacker. I mean, it's a Javan in the in the jungle, which changes a lot the early game because hacker in early game is not the brightest until he hits level six. Well, um, I've got you. I've got there. That I uh, the er, er, error, error, error. No, okay, Jarvan's a definitely good pick. Like I was actually kind of curious. Like they banned the Zin was banned, but they picked Lee, and then like there's no Jarvan. Mm -hmm. What happened to the Jarvan? Did he just vanish off the face of the earth? No. Okay, that's a very strong pick up right there. That's going to kind of change. That's going to go against the Lee Sin quite well, especially Jarvan does have his early game advantages. He does, you know, he has the flag and drag like you said in the last game. And it does do a lot of damage, and I just think we're going to see that standard start at the top, make their way to bottom, help out the lane, and then help out mid lane, especially level 2 and 3. Okay, then. So we expect... Now now that the Hecarim is no longer in the cards, you do expect that Javan is going to take full advantage of the early game, as we do expect. But that listen does a lot of damage on his own as well um, in oh, yeah. the early game. So, so teams are going to have to be careful. I mean, the LeBlanc is not much to be worried about, but when you have the Malka in the top lane and the Jax, if a Counter-Strike lands, and then you have the Lee Sin on your head, pretty much, this is going to be getting pretty sore. Malka is very tanky and very sturdy. And talking of sturdy, you guys can enter the competition exclamation mark giveaway to Smooth. win yourself an ESL 2.0 chair, some vouchers from the ESL store. There's also exclamation mark commands to view a bunch of the commands. For example, exclamation mark cup if you want information about the event. Exclamation mark social to follow all the social media when we're making posts, when we're casting, when we're doing this and that and all the it's and bobs. Exclamation mark bracket is one of the key ones you're going to be looking at. That shows you where these teams are placed. And you can actually have a look at the loser bracket. This is kind of where we are right now. These teams are on, you know, the edge where only one team is going to be progressing towards the next phase in the winner bracket. And the losing team is going to be out of this one. That is definitely the case, and if you have more questions that we have not answered, you can simply go to esl.gg slash official sec to learn everything you need to know about the tournament, about the prizes, about anything at all. Right now, it is life or death for both of the teams. We have Team Horizon Reapers versus Gucci Gang, Hungarian team versus Greek team, and one of the two are going to say goodbye to ESL sec tonight. So... We are very shortly going to get into the rift to find out who's going to be taking the first game. But just shortly to let you know about what is upcoming. Tomorrow we have a rescheduled game. And our proper scheduled games are going to be next Tuesday. And I'm pretty sure it's a game that none of you wants to lose. We have Different Dimension versus Bontech, which is on the upper bracket. And of course, Rift Esports versus G Play BG, who is also in the upper bracket. So again, there, we're going to see two teams that will fall into the lower bracket and face the teams that are going to basically win today. The team that's going to win today, the team that's going to win tomorrow. So stay tuned, make sure to follow the stream, make sure to follow us on our social media because we're going to be giving you all the information you need to know about the games, about the days, about the times, everything literally that you need to know. So, so how, do we, how, how do we see, how do we see, I'm going to jump straight back into the game again. We talked about the early game a little bit and then we made a pause to let people know everything about the tournament and now let's get back into the game right before we hit into the rift. Um, what do you see when team fight breaks? How do you see it going? I mean, we have a lot of utility for both teams, a lot of protection. We have only one tank each and a lot of CC that's going to go down. Well, for, for THR, I think the initiation is going to be a virus Bram alt. Like we're going to see that straight get engaged. They're going to have the zero try cash. Somebody fling them back at there. Leeson's going to jump in. Jack's going to hop in 
know with this counter strike and that's how they're going to be playing that one and i expect to see that probably you know in almost every team fight i'm going to expect that to be the kind of engage method and moving on to the other side for gg it's kind of like well we have to wait for the jarman to make the engage or the malka because you don't engage as leblanc you don't engage as the Caitlyn or karma like it's kind of a weird situation but i don't know it's, it's going to be hard but if you are asking me you know which team should be having the team fight advantage i am going to have to give it towards thr just because of the composition they have right there but just looking at the Java and the LeBlanc, if they get these picks rolling early on, I can I can see them just snowballing ahead into the team fights. I just can't wait for these two teams. That Bromi showing the white flag right there. Don't you show us that flag already? We want to see big, <laughs> big fights happening. Can I have big fights from the second minute? I want literally red buff on both junglers and action. Well, like, that's the start they're going for. Jarvan's going to start on top, you know, get things going, and then move towards the bot to help his lane out. So I expect that, like you said, I do expect a level 2, level 3 gank, and I really hope we do see it. So, we're going to see that mirror start, and we, we usually see the start where both junglers start from the top side, and they end up in the bot side mirroring each other. That Jarvan is either going to be going towards the mid lane but that azir has just placed down a ward so he is going to be spotted right there and he can't if possibly he wanted to invade the listen at this point so that ward right there from azir means that they have studied his movement and oh that, yeah they like that he's actually, studying red. exactly he wasted his time right there which is very very important for that listen just look at the abuse that's happening in the bot lane right here and this is where we said like the aggression from the Caitlyn karma combo is they're already level two they're already ahead right now and they are going to be painful and that's kind of just forced Brahm to be back, sitting back but he does land his passive there but it's not going to proc as karma is just going to you know pop it and run away and exactly what we said about the karma she does counter the Brom pretty hard that Brom has no way of sustaining the lane and the karma box quite hard in the early game, especially because we say that ultimate that she has available from level 1 is one of the strongest early games that you can have in the game. Apart from maybe the Elise as well. well like, they're still level 1 and like Karma's level 2, Caitlyn's level 2, they've been there for a while already and that's kind of just forcing them to play extremely passive under this tower. A wild chain is going to land in the mid lane, but Azir has smelled that there is a gank from the Javan coming from the bot side of Reva, and the harassment in the bot lane just keeps on going, and at the end of the day, that is what a Caitlyn lane is meant to be doing. Oh, yeah. It's meant to be taking Traps tower super everywhere. early, exactly, into the game. And that makes the Javan being able to force himself into other sides of the map, such as the Jax in the top lane or the Azir in the mid lane, has tried to gank twice so far. Well, right now, it's like all eyes on Azir. He's still hanging around there. He's still taking the jungle. Because look at that. Oh, that was a perfect timed flash just to get out of the engagement Ooh. in the top lane. Very quick flash right there from the Markai. Good reaction. So that would have costed him his death. You see that the Karma here does not even care to poke the Varus. She does only care to poke that bro, but look what is happening in the bot lane. Four man down there, flag and drag underneath the tower, and that Javan is in trouble. First spot for the LeBlanc, but the Javan is going to fall to the virus as well. And look how low the LeBlanc is as well. That was a very dangerous dive right there. No, like, that's... To me, at this point, this is very, very early to try to take dives. Like, as much as you could expect it from an aggressive comp, but I wouldn't do that right now. And they did escape, you know, LeBlanc with a little slither of HP. So, but after that, you can expect the counter. You can expect Lee to come right back into this. Well, they are going to be chasing that Karma that is going to be running back into their jungle. Jungle? Tower! Holy moly! <laughs> I'm losing my wards already and we only have two kills in four, five minutes. That's alright. That's alright, you know, kind of aggressive. Uh, we could expect a lot more, um, especially on the early game advantage that they do have. But that is kind of like right now they're playing, they got back into their lane, their lane's kind of clear, they can farm and then they can just catch up quite a bit. But this Malka, 
He is out of mana, so I expect Jax to be playing very aggressive soon. Well, another chain is going to be landing a lot of poke on that Azir in the mid lane. We did say that the Blanc has her way because of the mobility around all that Azir poke, especially after she hits six, she's gonna start being very dangerous for the Azir to stay alone in his mid lane. Oh no, definitely. And then like they do have now, they've kind of forced Lee to hang around the mid a lot more now, especially because Jarvan's just been repeatedly hitting this mid lane, hitting all around, being like, hey, I'm still here, hey, I'm near the bot lane, hey, I'm all around by the dragon. So we haven't even seen him go near the top lane really, besides to get his red buff. So they are playing quite aggressive in this mid lane. They can't, I think they want to shut down Azir now before he becomes, you know, this monster in the late game. He is around to try and make a play in the mid lane. Could potentially ward over and get onto the LeBlanc, but I just wanted to say that that Java has not been unspotted the whole game. Like, they always know where he is. There are cheeky wards into his jungle to spot every single one of his moves. So the listen was sitting around in the mid lane for a potential dive by the Java. And also, the Karma had roamed into the mid lane. So that was very dangerous stuff right there. Ooh. The chain is going to land. Holy, that was exactly what we were talking about, about the level 6. And we are going to have a brawl to be doing the bot and the bind is going to be landing onto that virus, but no more damage going down. And both the bot laners are going to be running away. That Brom has taken a lot of punishment right there by the duo of Caitlyn and Kama. He wants to run away because the heal on virus is not up yet. And the second, kind of... the second that Caitlyn hits 6 right now, there's going to be an instant ultimate. Oh yeah, like that's why he is popping all the potions he has and trying to kind of play a little bit more out of sight and just playing a little bit more safe than he usually does. And I think that's just, that engagement was very awkward for the support there, Valerie. Ouch. Um, oh boy. Boris was forced to farm, but you're going to see the ultimate's going to come out very shortly in a we moment. We are going to have six. an engagement again from the Brom, but he might be paying for this one. The listen is down there as well, but the Q is going to miss. So we aren't going to have a continuation on this gank. He did go through quite a couple of wards as well from GG. So they knew he was coming and right now he's backing off on a ward as well. So they will know when he's completely gone. There is a chance of diving. Are they going to take it or are they going to back off here? Because there are quite a lot of summoners now. They do know. Oh, here it comes again. Maokai is deeping on the bot lane. And the Varsal is going to be landing. The Caitlyn disappears. But the Ignite is on the virus and the Q is going to land by the Kama, so he goes down as well. Both ADCs for both teams are down right now. The Azir has arrived onto that bot lane and he's going to be assisting his team to try and take down that tree. He's going to be going down to the respective top laner. One and zero for the Jax. I know, and like right then, like at that point, you might want to cancel your teleport. You might want to get away. You don't want to get involved in that fight, especially after all that time you saw like Kama kind of had to get away and... So that fight is definitely going to be favoring them, but look, it is still 3-3, even gold, it's 8 minutes in, everything is going perfect for them right now, for both teams. So, the question comes in, I want to ask you now, how are you going to start abusing this Karma Caitlyn lane when, you know, they were focusing the tower early on, but now they've been forced to kind of just play extremely, you know, a little bit more passive, because the jungle has always been around. That is actually going to be a problem for this lane, especially because we say, oh, they're going to be casting that Lee in the mid lane. The Jin is going to be landing and the Kick is going to be landing as well. Flag and Dragon, the Lee the Cataclysm is going to go down to finish him off. First well, there's my kill... answer right there. Exactly. First kill for the Javan right there. And coming back to the Caitlyn and Kama lane, it is a pity for them. Now, they haven't been able to touch the tower at all nine minutes into the game. And that is actually what we said is the purpose of that lane. That virus is sitting on two kills ahead. And even though he's been pushed under his tower, his performance on the on the CS is equal to the Caitlyn. Oh, yeah. Like... And then you have a look to the mid lane though, no? LeBlanc is very much ahead, <laughs> you know, two kills, one assist, zero deaths, and just abusing this. And the top lane, I'd have to say Jax is definitely going to oh, start Oh, flashing ultimate onto that Caitlyn, the virus is going to be flashing underneath the tower to try and get that Caitlyn down. The bind is going to be landing by the Kama and the Q as well. Let's see if somebody's going to be down here, flash away by the Kama, so he doesn't want to have to do anything with this. And every single summoner is down in the bot lane, and look who is coming. Oh, oh like boy, the we have the Javan and the LeBlanc this? flag and drag onto the virus. He's going to be going down two kills for the jungler of GG. And we talked about how impactful the Javan can be in his hands. We did see him in the Jav on the Javan previously, and he did pretty well. I oh, know, like te textbook rotation right there. They're like, oh, um, they are they're coming aggressive on us. They call for help. Jungler comes down, and then 
They just joined the fight, get an easy pick. They're going to be getting this first blood tower in the bot lane. Uh, exactly, in these what did we say? Now. We said Caitlyn's and a lane that needs to take first tower by minute 10. And we were saying, well, that's an unfortunate. They haven't been able to take any shots on that tower. Well, 10 minutes and 10 seconds into the game, they do manage to get that tower. So even if it's 10 seconds late, that is a tower. Uh, they still got it. Yeah. No, no. Like, and that, that right there is kind of like where things start to get out of control. You have a 2 0 1 LeBlanc. You have a 2 1 1 Jarvan. You know, the Malka is not having the best time top lane versus Jax, but um, they're not far behind as they can definitely. Jax is very, I wouldn't say squishy, but in terms of getting fed, he needs to get a lot more kills before he's able to do 1v2s, 1v3s that we've seen before. So I kind of expect him to try and shut him down at a certain point, but we do see just look how many people are moving towards this top lane now as they refocus for the next tower. Exactly, we do have the rotation with the Kate and Thunder Black is going to be into a surprise as the Brom is in the mid lane right now. Are we going to be seeing that proc on the LeBlanc? We are not. So the Caitlyn Karma lane are going to be swapping lanes because they do want the top lane tower as well. That Jax had in his mind to maybe Risky. fight this, but then he's like, oh wait, there's a Karma here as well, there's Javan here. They're going to be engaging on the Javan, going to be, be lagging and dragging away. And that Jax has already entered the fight, popping the ultimate bind, going to be landing onto the Jax by the Karm, and she's running towards the wrong direction. Brom is going to be able to claim the kill on this one, though. Unfortunately for THI, he's not really the target you want to be killing the kill to, but they'll take it at this point. I oh, know, you definitely take any little sort of an advantage you can and get back into this as you want to catch up with the gold lead. But you see Malka in the mid lane, just like, well, okay, well, you guys are fighting there. I'm <laughs> just going to push out this lane, guys. Uh, move out the way. So, right now, I have to say this this is a very even start. You know, the Jax is 101. He is kind of oh, going to be the same. going to be race. going on to the bot lane of TH. And Luku has joined in. Is the LeBlanc and the virus is going to be going down? That chain. Didn't hit anyone right there. Caitlyn Ultimate is going to be going down another flag and dragon. Who are they going to be giving that kill to? Well, Javan is going to say, well, you know, I ain't going to leave that kill for anyone. I'm going to take it myself. Thank you very much. Four kills for that Javan. Oh, no, and they're going to just push out this top lane objective. Like, that. that's just completely the team plays there. But do expect the rotations. We do see, a, we don't see too many wards to really spot them out. We see one, which kind of, like, makes them play a little bit more safer. Not playing so far ahead of the minion waves. So... They are definitely on their way. Karma is behind them, and Karma can hurt, but they could instantly turn as Azir does try to do that, just trying to get a bit more aggression. But here comes the turret monster in the bot lane, as Jax is definitely known. With that lantern, hammering it down, what can you do? Exactly. The second that Marco steps away from the lane or TPs into another lane to help his team, that Jax... And this is a Jax that hasn't even finished Trinity. He is about to finish Trinity really, really soon. And then when the blade comes in or whatever else he chooses to go for, he's very dangerous at taking towers. So they, they are going to have to kind of weigh the situations for TT where they actually really need the Malkai to join in and where they don't. Well, like that's... If Malkai isn't in a lane and you have him come over to help you in an engagement or try and take an objective, as you see, they are by the Rift Herald. And while Malka is still hanging around in the bot lane, are going to back off this one very quickly the moment they start spotting the Karma and the Java in the front lines. So, there has been an air Drake up so far, and none of the teams really actually want it. I mean,. I'm pretty sure that when a when a fight breaks, the the victorious team is going to be taking that air drape, but for no other reason than getting a new one to spawn and hopefully it being a more useful, as we call it, dragon. Like yeah, if we if we see a fight break out, I'm pretty sure it's going to be by the Rift Herald. I don't expect it to be by that Drake, but you know. I suppose right now GG can be like, well, guys, we're ahead. We've got, you know, the map pressure. They're scared of us, as we've just shown you by, you know, the Rift Herald. They battle instantly after getting spotted out. So they can kind of throw it around there. But Jax is hanging around. And Jax is kind of the one of the champions you do want to be taking this if you want to try and get a steal in or if you want just somebody to solo with. Well, we did see that they put the Caitlyn in the top lane. Exactly what we're talking about, like... She's not certainly ahead, but she's not behind either at this point. And putting her on the sideline when you have vision of everyone in the enemy team is quite a good thing to do. Here is the Lee Sin taking the Drake and 
just to get it over with. Beautiful chain right there is going to land on the LeBlanc and she is going to die by the kick of Lee. Now they're going to be onto the calm and she's going to go down again. Double kill for the listen and that Varus ultimate was so precisely set there. That was exactly as LeBlanc was jumping in. Four man cataclysm just to put every single member of DHR into these walls and stop them from seizing. And that was successful for now. Oh yeah, like, I suppose right then they just traded two ultimates for, you know, to keep this mid lane objective, to keep the vision up there and to keep, you know, you don't want to give away towers. You don't want them to get back into this game. You are still ahead. You have got 2k gold lead, but Right now, Malkar is kind of, you know, predicting, and I would definitely say it, like, they should be taking the Rift Herald after this one, but, you know, there is only two people who kind of scare away four, so, they are playing careful, I have to say, THR being going? very respectful, um, <laughs> it's on an adventure. He wanted to take a peek at that blue buff, you know, maybe steal it Same. if he could. It just, it just wants to be in Lord of the Rings or something like that, so... Oh, the mid lane is oh, gonna, the gonna be, gonna be the diving line. that from right there, and the Azir. Yes, he cannot return the damage at this point because he is so slippery. Javan's gonna be so in his face in the mid lane as well, and THR suddenly just backs off of that tier one mid lane tower, and he's gonna be going down for GG. Three towers for them, one for THR. Oh, yeah, and that's the gold lead is kind of you know getting a little bit more you know in favor for GG right now, and this LeBlanc is just completely punishing this Azir. Like as much as we said early on, like ah, hey, you guys let Azir slip through the picks. Um, well they had a reply to it, and right now it's working off beautifully. There we and go. And there goes the rip herald. Exactly, and LeBlanc has found herself and Azir in the mid lane, but the second the Brom gets there, she's like, okay, I'm sorry, our mouth is gonna flash and get away from us straight away. See that but damage. The Look heal has been popped also. The damage she did right there, like, that's kind of like Azir can't fight this. Azir's gonna have to fool somebody else to help him out. So, he is just gonna be healing back in the base, and I expect now to, like, they want to start moving toward the team fight orientated comp. You saw how they won that one. So right now, that is their saving grace. It's like, okay, we have the team fight. We're doing well. If Varus gets the engage, Braum follows up. It's great, guys. Just keep it up. Not give away any early game advantages. Play for that team fight structure. And then group up for a fight. So LeBlanc, I'd have to say, is going to be trying to catch somebody off guard. Like, you have, a, you have a champion like that that does so much damage and is has the roaming capabilities. Use Well, we have lost Ghostar for a second right there, but there is a chance that LeBlanc could go in the side lane very easily against the Jax if and when that Malkai chooses to join the fight and they choose to put the LeBlanc on a, on a side lane. But right now, they can very easily play on a 1-3-1 one, one because the Caitlyn, Karma lane and the Javan are very safe in the mid lane as three. And then you have the Maokai who can stop the Jax and split push against him. Well, not specifically to beat the Jax, but like stop him from sieging any of their towers. And then you can also have the LeBlanc on a side lane to be oh, able yeah. to push equally. And then what do you do? If you put your Azir on the side lane where the LeBlanc is pushing, you're definitely in trouble because that LeBlanc will kill the Azir. And then what do you do when the fight breaks and that LeBlanc instantly TPs in and then that's a 4v5 against you? I just expect LeBlanc to mirror where Azir is, just to try and pick him or punish him and just be, you know, LeBlanc, one of the most painful champions if you get caught in that stun. So, we are in the pause, but I do expect there to be a team fight very shortly as Baron is going to be up in around about 3 minutes, or just under 3 minutes. So... I don't know, like, right now, Jax needs to continue pushing the objectives. He's doing very well in that. He's <laughs> he's one of the champions. He's just going to be sieging towers, as we are going to be enforced. Well, right now, he's 30 CS ahead and one kill and two assists in his pocket. So he's, you could say he's definitely ahead of the Markai right now, and he could potentially beat him in a 1v1. But the only problem that stays for me is that LeBlanc, which, as you can see, they have already put her onto a side lane. And who's gonna go and stop her from pushing that lane? Like, you literally have to put at least two people right there to potentially kill her so you can join the fight. And I definitely. And 
Like you saw the Caitlyn ultimate just getting used there. Like there's no real use for it right now. Whereas Varus has, you know, this momentous this team fight capabilities. And Jax is just going to continue to abuse this Malka. Jax has found himself a treat. The ultimate has been popped. And we all know that when that Jax ultimate gets popped, somebody needs Walk to back away. off or he's going to be getting hurt. The, the listen is going to be joining the Jax right there. And the Malka is going to be going down very shortly. There we go. Boop into the head. Two kills for the top laner of THR. And I was talking about how hard it will be to stop the LeBlanc, but then... GG has to do Stop something the about that Jax, and we see five members of THR, well four members, the Jax is going back, joining each other to go and take that bot lane tier 2, but the second they hear the ring yeah. herald being popped in the mid lane, they're like, wait a second, these guys could actually take like, everything. Right now, Rift Herald will push a lot faster and a lot harder than, you know, all you having all your members there right there, and they just have three, so they have Jarvan to kind of, you know, defend the inhibitor if they do continue to push this, but... That is going to be the call to just like back off and you know try and take down this rift herald. This Jax is just going to try and smash with a Lampton, but it does just leap away out of his grasp. I wonder what he could do if he had a real weapon. Probably not as much. It seems like the Lanterns probably OP in this, you know, reality. You don't see them on the streets anymore. Everybody's picking them up. They're using them as weapons. Everybody's evolved. Okay, but the red buff is going to be given over to Caitlyn. I'm pretty sure. Yes, and that's yeah. going to be. You know, that's going to be a little bit extra for them, especially trying to engage. But this Jax right now, you know, we saw how strong the team fighters with the Zia and the Varus popping his ultimate, and Braum also joining in, and then Lee jumping in the back line. Having Jax now get ahead, this is going to be quite an interesting thing. Flash ultimate by the Varus under the Kettlin. The Azir is right there. Flash away and healed by the Kettlin. She just survives. That was just enough for her. The Varus ultimate was popped. A little bit too soon. He didn't wait for his team to completely be there in time. And the Javan is going to be joining his team in the mid lane. Pushed back by the soldiers of Azir. And the Malkai is in the mid lane also right now. Brom Ultimate is not going to be hitting anyone. And both teams are going to call it off. Meanwhile, the Jax is doing work in the top lane. There you And boop goes the tower. So, yeah, like that ultimate, they, they can't all, they do kind of catch themselves a LeBlanc in the mid lane. And Black and Dragon, three drag. members, and Cataclysm as well. They are trying to get onto that. Listen, he's going to be going down to the LeBlanc. The Azir is next. They're trying to kill him, and he will survive. Varus is going to be taking the kill onto the Javan, and the Azir falls in the end to that tree. But the Jax, meantime, has entered the fight with a TP, and all I see right here is a two-for-one trade in favor of GG, and they have a teleport up. Oh yeah, and that, that, that teleport especially is going to be where they can make or break if they do have a team fight very soon. So, like, we saw previous to this fight, the way Varus engaged with the ultimate, his team wasn't there to follow up. They couldn't really do too much, and then they had to, right instantly, they just all ran away. They had to disengage ultimate Brahma to pop his to get away, so... They are playing this on the edge, but we are going to see the Drake be taken. That was pretty much a fight. The THR had no ultimates left. They put themselves into that situation where GG tried to engage on them before the Cataclysm was not used. And then they baited all of THR's ultimates and then they're like, okay, we have the chance to cast them again in the mid lane. They did. Now they do have one teleport advantage on the LeBlanc. And they went two for one. Right now, oh, yeah. the difference between these two teams is 200 gold. It's literally nothing at all. Even the towers are almost even three for THR, four for GG. And they have put the LeBlanc against the Jugs. And that is a matchup I really want to see. Well, like, who, who, who can stop this Jugs? Well, the, the 3 1 4 LeBlanc, who does a lot of burst damage, can potentially be the threat. But. I don't expect Jax to take any fights alone at this stage, especially with the Blank, but he oh might have boy, to Oh boy, you here fight. it comes, first chain is gonna land, second chain is gonna land as well. Captors are gonna be popped and flashing back onto the LeBlanc, and now C is in defensive mode. Virus ultimate, meanwhile, in the mid lane is going to miss, and there's only the Caitlyn right there, and she can't really defend the lane, and you see how that Jax versus LeBlanc matchup can literally go anyway. I know, back and forth right there. Like, if, if Jax gets in range, it's gonna hurt. The Lantern does so much damage, especially on that, you know, third proc. And 
It was very smart to like kind of take that at a distance, poke him down. He was running, but the moment he turned, mm, that damage right there from that lantern. And the Baron has been started, ladies and gentlemen. Righteous Glory from the Marker jumping into three members but from BHR man. and another Cataclysm right on top of them. Who is going to be going down? The LeBlanc is going to be the one that's going down first. And the Karma is going to be following. What is happening to GT? Javan is going to be following as well into these deaths. And now they are on to the Marker. The Caitlyn has been pushed away into the top. And how in the world did GG lose this fight? The Cataclysm stopped. Three people dead in their tracks, and the second that LeBlanc dived into the virus, that was her death. I know, like, you lose LeBlanc in that fight, you lose so much of your damage. And is he is still alive, is he is continuing to just pump out damage, and then you have Jax joining in, then you have, you know, Lee to do even more damage. And that was a perfect Baron bait, just to go like, well, let's see how this goes. And then it kind of, I wouldn't say back. But it definitely kind of. Oh boy, DB is coming right in. now from the LeBlanc as he does want this Baron, but the Baron is gonna go down right before C manages to get there. It's gonna go down to the hands of a 4, 0, and 5 Jax. Oh, she she wanted to leap to her death twice, so we, we do get to see it again. <laughs> but kind of worth to try and stop the Baron, and she did do quite a little bit of damage, but. Oh, you Almost? don't wanna be getting in there all alone. Thankfully, the bind is gonna land on the VAR, so they can't chase anymore that karma but i just want to stand to the fact that there was a that was a three-man cataclysm that hit but the fact that the azir was on the side completely zoned out the caitlins he did not join that fight at all that's why it went fully to thr side because that azir was on the side and he was going back and forth into the bush where there was no vision so the caitlin could not come anywhere near from the top side close to this fight well, like, you, you see how much they, they engage with that one. They popped the ultimate. Malkai catched off a lot of people, but there wasn't any damage to follow up, especially you lose LeBlanc in that fight. So, the, I'd have to say right now, THR have the team fight capabilities, but just look how much the gold has just completely swung in favor. They are now ahead. So, could be seeing an inhibitor go down right now, but is this, this could be the fight back into it if they do manage to catch him off guard, which LeBlanc was just trying to do. And Caitlyn does pop her ultimate, which ends up just tickling somebody. Oh, they are trying to engage on that. Jack's Righteous Glory has been popped and twisted advance as well onto that. Jack's is going to be getting so much bigger from Sterex Kates. He is going to finally go down to that Caitlyn who has been starving the whole game. But that took five members of GG to kill that Jax and it took a while as well. Two ultimates. Um, That's like... That's and five how much people. it takes to stop Jax? Um, I'd be worried in the next team fight when you can't all focus him like that. And when his flash is up as well. Oh yeah, and you see the top lane, the focus is going to be shifting right now for THR as they are going to be getting this objective, walking away, making use of that Baron buff and kind of, you know, puts GG on the back foot in this one. I mean, as much as I will agree that getting that big shutdown on your ADC is very worth, then... I think maybe it was worth because anyways, THR would have taken a tower anyways and it, it was going to be like the last outer tower that was left. Yeah. So instead of them being passive and just give them the tower anyway, which they were going to do, they decided to group up and take matters in their own hands and at least get that shut down onto their ADC who indeed she has been starving the whole game. Oh yeah, well, it's going to be a 1-1-3 one, one, Caitlyn now, but it's still up against, you know, 4-3-6 um, Varus, who's doing a lot more work, especially in the team fights. And then, I don't know, it's like, the kills aren't really in anybody's favor, but the team fights are completely decisive from THR. And right now, Jarvan has to find the right, I have to say, engagement, where they can try to blow up somebody very quickly, perhaps the Azeal Varus, before the team fight gets kind of out of their hands. And keep LeBlanc alive. Well, let's see what GG can do to turn this around because they were 2k ahead and right now they're finding themselves about 6k behind in gold. And there is a new dragon spawning, thankfully, for GG and unfortunately for THI, it's going to be an ocean drake, which is not clearly what they were looking for. They would much rather it be an infernal or a mountain drake to help them see it even more. And. As much as I was thinking that LeBlanc was working, the second he gets into teamfights, he, he just disappears. Oh yeah, like, 
She does a lot of damage against the Zia in a 1v1, but when it comes to team fight, when she hops in, she just gets caught out and blown up, and like, she's very squishy at the moment, so... I don't know if we're gonna expect, you know, a little bit more defensive items from her, hopefully. Just to, you know, kind of keep herself alive a little bit more. Like, you see, the Zia has the Banshee's Veil, whereas... He's just gone full out of aggression. Well, the Javan and the Kama are waiting on the side, hopefully to try and get something. And that LeBlanc is looking for opportunities again and again and again. And look at that carpet of traps right now. It is not cupcakes because of that skin, which it's very unfortunate. I do like the cupcakes in the middle of the traps. Hungry. And the I'm Jax is back now. to his uh, typical position. He's just split pushing at the bottom. So the second that focus for GG splits, I think we're going to see an engage by THR. Oh, yeah. Like... They want to try to get back into this. Um, I don't know if GG can really like fight this though, but they do spot Jax in the bot lane and they kind of put LeBlanc there, which is going to be one of the counters towards it, but they're going to lose a lot of their damage again in this team fight. Look how much they do choose to engage. Oh boy, the Jax has. Oh my god, he's just going pop. to pop right there from like. What was that? A quarter? A, a third of her 8 speed just gone down onto one hit from the Jax and. I'm gonna say it again, as much as that LeBlanc was working early game, it's not working right now for GG. She needs yeah, she a different She 700 use. HP in that one hit, and that's, oh, that's a lot Oh, last and virus ultimate again, a beautiful Azir ulti to send Caitlyn back into her death, but he's gonna pay with his own death as well. The Javan has been gone to the middle of THR, and the Marga is trying desperately to get a route down onto the lease, and that virus is sitting there though, and hitting shot after in shot, and lane. meanwhile, in the bot lane, Jax is having his own party. Party by himself. Well, I suppose it's Jax. Um, he looks kind of scary sometimes, so you're gonna have him just push out the bot lane, you know? And that was like just perfectly played. Like, they didn't really have the best team fight. Azir got caught out. That was the saving grace. But, you know, they didn't need to win that team fight. They just needed to keep them fighting there while Jax was hammering at the inhibitor. Exactly. They only that... lost one member. I think that was, that was very much worth it oh, for DHR. Oh, very worth it. Like, you lost the Zia, who kind of, he got off all the abilities he needed to. He flung the Caitlyn flying into chaos, so that was definitely worth it right there. I will 100% agree with you. I would like to see the LeBlanc in flank mode. It's not working so far. Let's see, sitting on the sides or at the front when the team fights happen. I would like to see kind of a teleport flank happen and maybe have a chance of popping someone out of nowhere. Are they going to need it? Like, Saying this. They're definitely going to need that because Baron's going to be up very exactly. shortly. Marka is in the bot lane, but he does have his uh, TP up whether he needs Question to is... join the fight or not. And the Baron has been instantly I don't think started they can by Tieta. This. Oh my god, it's just it's just gone. It's instantly gone. That was like five second Baron right there. Like, they couldn't contest us. They didn't really have any vision. They weren't around by the map. They... They are going to push down mid lane, but I think the moment they saw that Baron was caught up, they're going to have to try to catch somebody off guard. And you said you want to see LeBlanc flanking. Um, he's flanked himself into the mem three members of THR. Let's see if anybody's going to be getting caught off guard. They are pinging that bush. So they are thinking that somebody is indeed in there. And when LeBlanc makes her appearance, they're going to say, oh, yeah, we were right. The roots are going to go down. They have caught the Maokai off guard. So the Caitlyn as well. And oh my god, GG is falling apart. One player at a time. Three members. Four members are going to be going down. And what can the Javan do? He's just going to back off in his jungle. Hoping for a miracle. Because this is going to be most likely the end of game one. They don't even care about the minions. They just want to go in. He's going to cataclysm and flag and drag his way but out. I don't think this tower. is going to help them at all. No, not at all. Like, you can't stop this. Like, everybody's still alive, and definitely there's going to be the surrender right there, just like, you know, kind of taking it away, not giving it to them. And that's... Uh, I don't know what to say. That was an extremely aggressive game from THR. Oh, you know, they were in the back from the beginning, and then they just pulled out this team fight comp. You know, Jax paid off. The Varus was doing well. Everybody was kind of just on point. Whereas going against GG. They just didn't have the team fight capabilities. LeBlanc got blown up, Jarvan wasn't able to find the right picks, and that's just... Uh, the picks are going to have to change completely going into the next game. What do you do, though? Do you 
just completely remove jacks against this guy or do you play something aggressive that could potentially you know like gank the jacks in the lane and being able to have some impact like do you put something aggressive against it, like a jace like a nah do you somehow make your picks and bans phase that way that maybe a nah slips through or the J slips through or any other aggressive peak that gg could have uh, up their sleeve for top lane because that jacks proved to be a really big problem and we thought at the start that the leblanc would be the problem but then in the end some very weird decisions by the leblanc caught her off guard there and it seemed like thr knew every time where that LeBlanc was. And that virus oh, yeah. ultimate was getting popped instantly. And of course, when LeBlanc can't move and is super squishy in between like two to three or four members of DHR, she was getting popped instantly. Oh yeah, and like, I think the one, the one answer to this is you, you ban Jax. Like, he, he is only a threat when you let him get ahead or when you let him really just scale onto the late game. And I think the answer to this right now is just to force out a team fight composition. Just be like, okay, G Gigi just needs to sit back, b pick out a lot more better, you know, team fights. They had the Javan, mm -hmm. but, you know, kind of have something to follow up. You don't have much burst damage. You don't have much AOE damage. And that just led them to lose these fights. And, you know, this game is a team game. And team fights mean everything eventually in the late game if you get to that stage. So if they take the early game picks again, we have to see them use it. We have to see them going, you know, completely ham, taking down these mid towers, LeBlanc diving more. But... I don't think there's like a proper answer to this team fight comp besides picking a team fight comp. I will 100% agree with you because when the Javan was diving in, you literally couldn't see anyone else diving in to be able to do the damage. Like when the Marco was diving in, nobody was really paying attention to the Marco because he was not providing mats at that point. They were so far behind that he wasn't providing mats. But the second that LeBlanc was trying to get into the fight, it was so into the fight and in the face of the virus that an ultimate was like, 100% likely to hit her and she just completely disappear of the map. So you heard it first for this game. THR is 1-0 up against GG. RGG going to be able to come back into this game and push our best of three to a third game? Or is THR going to go straight into a clean sweep and take this 2-0 and we're going to have to say goodbye to Gucci Gang? Stay tuned and we're going to find out after a very short break.